Hi everyone. As part of my six month update, maybe even more months update, I'm going to be looking into my Oncidium or Oncostele wildcat. It's the golden star, golden red star, because this pseudobulb here is clearly deteriorating. I don't think it's rotting, but thinking is not knowing. And we all know what the definition of assuming is. Besides that, I know that in this pot there is a mix of lecker and that I wasn't very on top of things with regards to watering last year. So I'm going to unpot it. Let's check the root system. It wasn't very hip last year because I wasn't keeping up with the watering. And I'm going to make the adjustments necessary to make this happy long term. And we can see woohoo, the difference between the root system that came out last year and what we have now. And this is great timing because even though I've got no reason to be doing this because of the fact that it's only been in this pot so little time, we can clean up, get rid of the bulb, separate the pieces and address what I do with climbers and check the rhizome. Oh, it's all happening in this one. That is so cool. I'm very pleased to see that these roots are doing much, much better than when I unpotted it last year. That means that uh, what I thought I was not keeping up, I was doing well enough. We can do better with orchids. That's always the case, right? We can do better because I want to get this now into small lecker, very small lecker, and then know that I'm getting it on the right track to maintain its health and get it to grow and bloom again like it did in the past. So yes, I'm still fiddling with trying to separate them out. Very careful, I do not want to break the roots. I'm also going to have to get my sprayer out because I don't want these roots to dry out and get stressed. Meanwhile, I know that I'm getting new roots because I've got new growths coming. So I have that as my backup plan, but why ruin what is already a very good root system and not take advantage of the fact that we've got that. So climbers, problems with climbers in this setup of self-watering and lecker. There's always one pseudobulb that is a little bit lower in the pot. And then bit by bit, the orchid goes up and up. Thankfully, we're at the early stages at this point that that is not necessarily happening. So we're okay for another two years with this one being in a proper pot. This one is coming off. I'm not going to squeeze it. I'm not going to press it. I do not want to have this rotting thing of evil looking bulb oozing onto anything for fear of spreading the bacteria even though the bottom is already open and exposed but we don't need to perpetuate the problem so as you can see the rhizome is quite long and i'm just going to go in as far as i dare without causing too much damage to the existing root system and we get to see that we have a clean rhizome. That is always a beautiful sight. Yep, I do appreciate a clean rhizome all the time, every time. So that takes care of this one. We don't have many dead roots, if any at all, on this piece, which is fabulous. And I can then, as it's not that much of a breezy day, apply some cinnamon on the base of it. There we go. No paintbrush needed today. The finger did it and yum, that tasted good. <laughs> this piece, let's see, what have we got? No new growths as of yet unless I discover some when I take the sheaths off. But beautiful roots. Ah, yes, this was the growth that wanted to bloom, I think. No, was it? 
No, it didn't want to bloom. That's not the one. I, I cut a spike off the other piece because I wanted this one to recover this year. So this piece didn't even bother with blooming, which is absolutely fine by me, seeing as I had destroyed the root system due to using large lecker in an oncidium setup with finer roots, not a good idea because, or unless I would have kept up with the flushing and the watering, which I didn't. So I'm just removing the old spikes. And for that reason, the root system it had previously had suffered badly. I will link the video, put up a card, etc., And you can see how bad the root system was. And it was these new growths here that are actually bringing in the new roots. Thankfully, it is a vigorous grower of a root system. That is its saving grace. So I'm just getting rid of these sheaths as I can. Because, because of my setup, I have a misting that I have to do on the surface to maintain the humidity around the base. So I do go in quite often to mist, which is fine in the summer, but not so good for the winter months. And usually, as you can see by the length of these roots, these roots were developing over the colder period prior to spring, late winter, early spring, and that misting is a little bit risque. But we have a new little growth coming right here, which is fantastic because that is going to double my root system for the foreseeable future while still having a great root system from before. So I'm going to cut off these old roots. I feel a lot better. First of all, let's put the cinnamon away. We don't want an accident with cinnamon. Just misting the roots while they are exposed to the beautiful, beautiful afternoon. I hope the lighting is okay. My positioning today is a little bit on the west side, a little bit on the south side, because there is a breeze going on. And it is somewhat late in the day, and I have a schedule to keep. So it's not like I can do this tomorrow because there's more things happening in my collection that need addressing tomorrow. But this one is going to go into small lecker, bearing in mind that it is a climber and hopefully getting it correct into the pot where it won't start to rot other bulbs that are now going to be the lowest bulb in the pot. So I'm just going to clean this up properly and I'll get back to you when I'm done and I'll show you the result. Epiphytes and climbers, self-watering and LECA setup or semi-hydro. It is a conundrum and it can cause problems. We don't have as radical a climber here as they can be. They can actually climb half a suitable or entire suitable at a time, depending on how the rhizome reacts. But here's an example of a climber, which we're going to pot up and make sure that I don't have to disturb it again now that I'm getting it right. And I'm going to show you what I'm gonna do so that I don't get another rotting back bulb and I have to intervene in the next seven or eight months. That's the plan. But this is a beautiful sight. I love this and I love this and seeing all this goodness coming out of the old bulb still. That is a second flush of roots. It's good to know the attribute of the roots. In case one needs to intervene, do I have backup? So the wildcat will throw out a fresh set of roots as the pseudobulb grows initially, and then a second flush from the same bulb before the new growth even starts which is awesome. It's very generous and very much appreciated. Here, this piece, if I can, yeah, there goes a root. This piece was the one that I cut the spike off. I'm sure I did. I might have gone so low, I can't even see it anymore. But needless to say, this one hasn't bloomed this year for reasons of maintaining its health and getting it to get strong as opposed to what I did last year, taking a rescue orchid that I bought from the rescue table and 
had it growing beautifully. And then I just sort of thought, yeah, you're doing fine. And I didn't concern myself with it any further. And boom, I put it back into rescue mode, which is kind of a silly thing to do. But now I've got a beautiful piece, great little growth that hasn't got the size jump that, of course, a properly treated one would but a second growth coming and the root system is absolutely fine. And we're gonna do much better because this time around, I'm going to be potting it up in small leka only. Fine roots, small media, and possibly be a little bit more successful with regards to how it performs. There we go. I think that should work. Right, let's make the microfiber float again. This is the fun part. Get that microfiber to float. Yes, I did wash the pot. Another sign you can tell, especially in my pots, if I haven't been flushing appropriately, there's a lot of little black nooks and crannies where the debris that didn't get flushed out by regular flushing stayed and settled and somewhat dried not good for an insidium and I shouldn't do that. That is a typical sign if I cannot get in there with my toothbrush and loosen it evenly without too many headaches, that means I didn't flush enough. Right, climbers. Clearly we don't want an orchid to look like this in a pot. So, contrary to what normally would happen, let's see, you would say the back goes to the back of the pot Let's see if we can keep that microfiber floating. But the roots should be reaching the surface of the media without any issues, meaning that the back bulb will always be somewhat buried. Right, we'll get to that. And I'm thinking, do I want to put both pieces back into the same pot, considering I am going to be doing so much better with them? Let's see and turn this around and see if that makes any sense. If not, I'm going to put them in separate pots, but for the purposes of this pot, I'm, no, I'm going to put them together in the same pot. I have to keep in mind my space issues in winter on the shelf. These do not live outside in my climate all year round, despite the fact the leaves tell a different story, but that is more humidity based than it is climate temperature based. I don't have any humidity here in the summer, so they always suffer. But I think that looks good to me. And yes, they do look a little bit lower in the pot, but in this case, I am going to be able to raise them up once I'm happy with what I'm seeing position wise. And I'm really trying to make sure that the sun doesn't block what I'm doing. It's a bit awkward. I do apologize. Thank you for your patience. So this is it. This is the position I want, how they should grow. And even if that growth appears to be growing in the middle, that's okay. Yeah, let's do this. Let's get some lecker in there before we decide any further. And let's hope it floats down into position, which is my fun new little trick of repotting my orchids because I'm not concerned about abrasions on my roots, be they old or new. Not that much anyway. There's always a risk, but the weight, the drop into the pot is so much more gentle. And then you can just wiggle it around with your finger on a beautiful spring afternoon. Cool water, oh, orchids with roots, what's not to like? All right, let's keep going. And you can see I'm mainly fo focusing on the front of the orchid. My focus is to get the root ball that is in the pot right now and is active and growing, covered. And now my focus is not so much to the back. Sorry for the jiggle. Because in the back, A, I have no roots and B, I have buried pseudobulbs. So I hope this is making sense and that it is visible despite all the shadows. And this is also, as I mentioned in the beginning, my update regarding the potting up of this Oncidium, which was doing well. I put it back into rescue mode 
And now we can see that it is doing well again. And it's cleaned up and it's growing growths and good roots with a second flush of roots. So I'm still filling up, letting the leka fall where it may, using the water attributes to help me. Give it a little bit of a shake and then hold the pieces together. Raise her up and shake again. And let's see what happens now. Very gently, I'm gonna lower it back. I still want the effect of the water to help me because I'm not quite done yet. And yes, this all looks extremely wet. Everything is going into the crevices, into the small growths, into the little tiny new growth. It all looks very dangerous and set for rot. In my climate right now, I've, it's 5 p.m. and I have about 25 degrees Celsius. A warm breeze is going. And until she dries out, she will stay outside so that I can make sure she has enough time to dry out before going in. So back here, I have a little bit of a hollow, oldest pseudobulb, very old pseudobulb, but I have roots, so they are priority. Keep the roots covered that were previously used to a very wet setup. And now I'm going to raise her up to where I want her with regards to the new growths. And I don't actually have to shake the pot because of the water helping me to do it gently for the roots. The only mistake I can see that I might have made here is I don't have this growth facing the right way because the new growth is right back here in the corner. I may have needed to actually turn this growth the opposite way which would have caused a problem in the pot because of the other growth. So what I'm just going to do is speculate, leave it as it is, make sure that it does well on this growth, this growth cycle, and then we reassess the situation the next time around, wherever the next growth comes out. All this looks pretty, pretty dangerous. But I promise you, my temperatures are such, it's going to be absolutely fine. So my major point of interest now is the roots that are coming out new. I don't want to be spraying the surface too much. And the back here is also fine. There's nothing too buried. Now let's drain the pot and have a closer look. And then we can just fill around the top to fill in the blanks. And everything is settled and perfect. Now, here are my back bulbs of this climber. They are a little bit more submerged in this piece right here, but it's not so bad. And then I have the other back bulb right here, and it's not too, too submerged either. And everybody else here is touching the pot Exactly, perfect. New roots go straight in. Boy, I hope these shadows aren't too bad. New roots can go straight in. And the new growth is also going to be absolutely fine because of the way it's touching the media. And I have hopefully another year or two of this in the same pot. Bar anything funky happening as orchids do with regards to how this new growth will develop a second new growth in the months or year to come. If this wasn't so easy to see, I profoundly apologize. I don't want my camera with the sun glaring onto the lens. And the sun is now coming, setting in that area. Well, not yet setting, but you know, on the west side, I'm sort of southeast. But I really, really hope that this was obvious as to what I was trying to explain. Also as an update and seeing that more flushing does make a huge difference as to how oncidium roots develop in the pot and smaller media is better for them as they are much more 
hungry and thirsty for water than a mix of large and small lecker. Root size determines, in my opinion, in my climate, the size of the media that has to go in. I am very, very pleased to see what I saw in that pot. Fantastic. And now, the next time it wants to bloom, it can. Hope this was helpful. Hope you could see something. And if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. There's something I didn't quite cover properly because I was too focused on shadows, etc., time of day, noise behind the hedge and all that good stuff. <laughs> I appreciate you just letting me know in the comments below. I'd be super happy to elaborate. Thank you very much for your time, for watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day and very, very importantly, please stay safe and take care. Bye. Let's see, what have we got?